Hello scholars, my name is Mrs. Inerwa and I'm so glad you're joining me today. We're going to talk about the short sound for the letter U and we're also going to talk about nouns and verbs as well as read a wonderful story. For today's lesson you will need a pencil and a paper or you could have a book so you can record all of your wonderful lessons. You can also use a dry erase board and a marker and I always like to have a handy dandy socks to help me with wiping my board. So gather your materials and let's get started. I have taken our objectives for today and I've turned them into I can statements to help us really understand what we're going to learn about. Our first statement says, I can look at words and figure them out by using what I know about letters and sounds. And we know that letters make sounds and those sounds help us to read words and to understand what we're reading about. Our next statement says, I can match long and short vowel sounds with the letters that go with them. Today we're going to focus on the short sound for the letter U, but we're also going to talk about all of the other vowels. Our next statement says, I can say the most common sound for each consonant in the alphabet. And our last statement says, I can print lots of upper and lower case letters. So now we're going to work on writing the letter U. Um, I like to do something called an air write. Da. Uh oh. I don't even know what a U looks like. So I'm going to write it down here first. The letter U looks this way. Down around and up and that's an uppercase U and for a lowercase U we like to start kind of in the middle and go down around up and we're going to trace that line down so it's like going up an elevator and coming right back down that same elevator we don't want to come down a different elevator otherwise we'll be making a slide so let's try that lowercase U one more time ready down around up and trace that line back down and get your fingers up we're going to air write the letter u ready down around and up one more time down around and up now let's try the lowercase u are you ready fingers up ready go down around up and trace the line back down let's try it again down, around, up, and trace the line down. I think you did a great job. Now, let's so let's think about some of the things that starts with the letter U. What do you think starts with the letter U? That makes the sound up. The letter U makes the sound up. Now, some people like to say off, oh, but off oh is the letter O. Off. Oh. U is like you got tired and you went up. Oh. Can we try making that sound? Uh. Now let's think about things that begin with the letter U or even have a U in it. I'll give you a clue. Are you ready? I have, once you guess what I'm drawing, go and say it out loud. And it has a handle, maybe sometimes lines or poker. Did you guess an umbrella? That's correct. Umbrella begins with the letter U. Uh, uh, umbrella. Now, what if I draw a girl right under the umbrella? That's correct. Under begins with the letter U. The girl is under the umbrella. Uh, und, and E-R makes er. Under the umbrella. Very good. I like to write one more word, and that word, I'm not going to draw a picture, but I want to write that word so you can see another place where you'll find the letter U. Right now, it's at the beginning of the word, uh, uh, under. But look at this word, d, uh, k, duck. Now, we don't say duck. When C and K come together, they just make one k 
sound. So look at this. D, uh, k, duck. Do you see the letter U? That's right. The U in this word makes uh. D, uh, k, duck. So I have two pictures here that I like to add to my board. And this picture is, of course, we already have it on there. What's that? That's correct. That's an umbrella. A, a, umbrella. And very good. The kids are under the umbrella. Good job. Under. I have a song. I'm going to move this over so you can still see that word. Maybe you want to write that word in your book or write some of those letters if you have your dry erase board. There's a song from McGraw Hill Education about the letter U. So I want you to listen to the song. You might have to do some things with an umbrella. You might want to get up at this point and move around with the song. Are you ready? Let's listen. Hi everybody, and this is going to be a performance of My Umbrella. Now remember, you can use a real umbrella if you have one, but if not, just use your imagination and pretend. Scenario. Are you talking about verbs? Yes, a verb is an action word. Anything you're doing is an action. Right now, tell me, what are you doing? Are you flipping around? Are you eating? If you're eating, yes, that's an action. If you're sitting and watching, that's an action. You're doing so many things. Anything you're doing is an action. Sleep is an action. <clears throat> and, oh, I have another action for you. Eat is an action. I can eat. I can hold. That's an action. Anything you're doing. I like this one. I can, that's right, I can write. Write is an action. Anything you're doing is an action. So are you ready for that song? Well, let's sing it together. Now remember, if you don't have an umbrella, act like you have one, just hold your hands together. Let's go. They dry. Hide is an action word. Up is an action. I can look. That's an action.
So I heard so many action words in that song. What happened? What was he doing under the umbrella? Yes, he was hiding. Hide, I can hide. Hide is an action. Very good. And the umbrella can do what? Go up. Now think about that sentence. Is umbrella an action? I can umbrella. No. Is go an action? Yes. The umbrella was going up. So it can go. I can go. And what came down? The rain. Is the rain the action? I can rain. I can rain or I can I can go down. Yes, I can go down. The rain came down. Now there was something else he did. He looked underneath his umbrella. Look is another action word. I can look. So anything you're doing, I like some googly eyes on my look. Anything you're doing is an action. So what is an action word? It's a verb. And I like to say it like this. A verb is an action word. Say it with me. A verb is an action word. One more time. A verb is an action word. So always remember, a verb is an action word. Anything you're doing is an action. Now I'm thinking about my other word, a noun. A noun is a person, a place, or thing. Look around your house. There is nouns everywhere. <gasps> Listen, Noah, there are nouns in my house? Yes, there is. Are you in your house? Then you're a noun. A boy is a noun. A girl is a noun. A mom, a dad, a grandma, an uncle. That, those are all nouns. Are you in a house? Yes, because a house is a place. A house is a noun. Now, what else is a noun? Let's look at some things that are nouns. I have a few things here. Ooh, 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 ooh. I like this one. I like this one. A cup. A cup is a noun. It's a thing. But I can drink. Drink is the verb, is the action. But the cup is the thing. I have another one. I'm sure you're going to like this one. Yes, a shoe is a thing. Thing. It's a noun. So many nouns. Oh, wow. I have one real tiny. Yes, a car is a noun. It's a thing. And even a duck or a pigeon. Here we go. I have my little duck. That's a noun. A duck is a noun. And I have two more I would like to show you. Oh, there's more. I'm eating. Eat is the verb, but the spoon is a thing and a plate is a thing. My son loves to use this plate. It's, it's a nice plate. I love it too. Oh, 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 there's two more. I'd like to show you a couple more things. Even animals are nouns. I have a turtle. I have an elephant. These are all nouns. And my favorite one, and my favorite one. Oh, it's my favorite one. A book, a book is a noun. And there's so many nouns in the book. There's a toothbrush and a dog and a tennis ball. Oh wow, a butterfly, so many nouns in this book. But what can I do with a book? <laughs> I'm reading. Is read a noun? Is read a thing? No. Is read an action? Yes, a verb is an action word, and a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. So what is a noun? A noun is a person, a place, or a thing. So look around your house. I'm sure you can find me some right around you. Can you find three nouns? Go ahead, show me three. to read you a story today and while I read the story I want you to think about all of the actions that are gonna happen in the story and remember the action are the things that the animals are doing and then I want you to 
thing also in that story. Is there a person? Is there a place, an animal, a thing? I want you to think about all of the nouns, all of the animals or places or things that are going to be in that story. And remember to think about the action. What is it? What is happening in that story? The title of our story today is Bringing Down the Moon. Bringing Down the Moon by Jonathan Emmett, illustrated by Vanessa Cabal. While we read this story today, I want you to think about all of the things that Mo is going to do in the story. He's going to try to bring down the moon, but he performed so many verbs, a lot of actions to try to bring down the moon. Now let's think for a minute. Do you think Mo can bring down the moon? Would you be able to bring down the moon? Well, let's listen and enjoy. Hot diggity, exclaimed Mo as he borrowed out of the ground one night. Whatever is that? The moon was hanging in the sky above him like a bright silver coin. Mo thought that it was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. Whatever it is, I must have it, Mo said to himself. I know I'll jump up and pull it down. Thump, thump, thumpity, bump. Mo was so busy jumping, he didn't think about the noise he was making. And he woke up rabbits in her burrow. Now, Mo has done so many things. He has jumped, he made noise, and he woke the rabbit in her burrow. So he's doing a lot of action words. Let's keep reading. Mo, said Rabbit. What on earth do you think you're doing? Hello, Rabbit, said Mo. I'm trying to pull down that shiny thing. You mean the moon, asked Rabbit. So that's what it's called, said Mo. You never do that, said Rabbit. It's not as close as it looks. But Mo would not give up. I know, he thought. I'll get a stick and poke it down. He found a long stick and poked it up at the moon. Swish, 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 and swish. Can you read that part with me? Swish, 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 and swish. Mo was so busy poking that he tripped over Hedgehog in his bed of leaves. So now he got a stick, he got a noun, and he's poking on that moon. That's another action, poking. And he tripped. That's another thing he did. So he's jumped, he poked, he tripped over the Hedgehog, and he was making noise, so many actions. Mo grunted, Hedgehog, what are you up to? Hello, Hedgehog, said Mo. I'm trying to poke down the moon. You never do that, said Hedgehog. It's not as close as it looks. But Mo would not give up. I know, he thought, out throw something at it and knock it down. He found some acorns and threw them at the moon. Blink, blink, blinkity, blink. Ouch, said Squirrel. Mo, have you gone nuts? Hello, Squirrel, said Mo. I'm trying to knock down the moon. You never do that, said Squirrel. It's not as close as it looks. There we go. So he's done some more actions. He said, I'll throw. And he threw those acorns. So we have more action words. What's the action there? That's correct. Threw is the action. And the word acorn and moon and squirrel, those are all things or animals. And those are called nouns. So a noun names a person, a place, or thing. 
But Mo wanted the moon so badly, he would not give up. I know, he thought. Ow, another action. Climb a tree and carry it down. Mo had never climbed a tree before. It was hard work, and he was scared to be so far from the ground, but he kept on going until he saw the moon resting in the leaves above him. Mo stretched out his paws, but just when he thought he had the moon, he slipped. Ouch! Ink! Ouch! Ooh! Mo tumbled down and landed, splash, in the middle of a puddle. There he goes, falling off. Ouch! Ouch! Hot diggity drat, thought Mo. I almost had it that time. <gasps> then he noticed something floating in the puddle beside him. Looking at puddle, boys and girls, do you notice something floating? Is that the moon? Or is it a reflection? Well, let's see. It was pale and wrinkled, but Mo recognized it at once. The moon, whispered Mo. It must have fallen down with me. He reached out to pick up the moon, but as soon as he touched it, it broke into pieces and vanished. Mo sat in the puddle and cried. Rabbit, hedgehog, and squirrel came running up. Are you all right, Mo? asked Rabbit. I'm all right, sobbed Mo, but the moon isn't. I pulled it down and then I broke it. And it was so beautiful. And now I'll never see it again. <laughs> Do you think he really broke the moon? Do you see the moon? What's, what's going on with that moon? Yes, you're correct. There's a cloud around the moon. Oh, Mo, said Rabbit. You couldn't have pulled down the moon. You couldn't have broken it, said Hedgehog. And you'll certainly see it again, said Squirrel. Look! High up in the sky above them, the moon was coming out from behind the, the cloud. Ooh, whispered Mo, and it's just as beautiful Mole, rabbit, hedgehog, and squirrel stood and stared up at the moon together. It was beautiful, said rabbit. Very beautiful, said hedgehog. Very beautiful indeed, said squirrel. Yes, said Mo, but it's not as close as it looks. That story had so many actions of pulling and falling and, and thumping and, and waking and tripping. So many things happen in that story. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, scholars, thank you for joining me today. Join us next time for more learning opportunities. Remember, a verb is an action word and a noun is a person, a place, or a thing. Also remember how to write the letter U you go today or any of the days, I want you to think about some of the things you can do to practice what we've learned. Write the letter U. You could write some words with the letter U in it. And also, draw a picture about a person, about a noun, and what the noun is doing. Until next time, 